Welcome to episode five of Leading the Stands with Atoll. Today, we're diving into leveraging your management system for external audit success. Jackie and I are here to share our best tips for nailing those recertification audits, even on a tight timeline, drawing from our own experiences and the valuable insights we shared in edition 51 of our Lead the Standard newsletter. Now, despite Jackie battling the flu, we are bringing you an episode full of laughs and fun, proving once again that auditing is anything but boring. And if you think that it is, you're just not doing it with the right way or with the right people. So let's get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Leading the Standards, where we are diving into the world of ISO management systems auditing. I am Kelly, and with me again is our triple certified ISO auditor, Atoll director, and flu survivor, Jackie Stapleton. <laughs> um, we are thrilled to have you with us for episode five, leveraging your management system for external audit success. So since we're live, um, please expect a few bloopers along the way. Stick around till the end um, when we open the floor to our Atoll community for questions about today's topic or anything else relating to ISO management systems auditing. Before we do get started, full disclosure, Jackie is back with us. We did have a hiccup last week. She is still a little bit unwell, so we apologise in advance if we need a moment. Um, But we, as always, will push on. Nothing stops us here at Atoll. Um, so Jackie, today's episode stems from a real world scenario brought up by one of your consulting clients. Um, they recently secured a job with an ISO certified civil construction company. Now, I believe the conversation that they had with you went along the lines of, and I am going to read, um, I won this job with an ISO certified civil construction company, and they have recertification order in four weeks. I can't possibly write or rewrite an entire system in that time. What should I be focusing on in the short term to ensure that they are prepared for their recertification audit? So, Jackie, I know we have had similar questions here from some of our students previously. We have Wanda joining us today who has shared a similar story as well. So can you elaborate on the approach that you would recommend for this tight timeline? I can. Thank you. Um, I I guess when the consultant uh, mentioned this to me, um, my first response was, well, congratulations on winning a new job. Um, But my second thought was, well, one, they've left it a bit late. Um, And two, you shouldn't really have to prepare for your audit because it just should be the way you do things. But we all know, like even Kelly and I here before an audit, we, you know, we like to make sure things are in order. We can find stuff and so on. So, you know, I I sort of get it. And I suppose this, this consultant was trying to, as per what Kelly read out from their comment, they thought, they'd have to rewrite the entire system in four weeks. That's just not possible, Mm. just not possible. So um, I suppose when she asked me, I thought, oh, this is interesting, but I came up with four quick areas, well, four areas that she should focus on with the client to get them ready for their recertification audit. The four areas are their previous external audit results, their previous internal audit results, their management review outcomes, and their non-conformance and incident registers. So where I was heading with that is use your existing system. It Mm -hmm. will drive where you need to head. It will drive your priorities. Don't make up new stuff and start changing procedures. Have a look at what the system tells you first and then take it from there. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm a big believer in not creating just more stuff. Oh, my God, no. <laughs> yeah, so that's where I sent her down that path. And by the end of the Zoom, she was so relieved that she didn't have to rewrite an entire system. and really had some direction on where she was heading. So we can extend on that if you like. Absolutely. 
Yeah, yeah. So as I said, you can see from that list of four, your internal, external audit results, your manage management review outcomes, and your non-conformance and incident registers, they're already there. They're within the system. They're what manages your improvement opportunities. They're what identifies gaps. So they're the, the gaps are what we're looking for. So using what the system has already given us assists the consultant and the client to work on the high risk areas. So I'll move on to the four key areas and we'll nut them out a bit, Kelly, because I'm sure yep. you're familiar with them as well. So yep. the first one was have a look at previous external audit results. I thought this was the, the best one to start with because she was the consultant. She was com preparing the client for the recertification audit from an external audit. So the first thing you need to look at is, well, what happened last time? Where, where were the gaps? Because I need to check, are these filled? Has, yeah. has, has there been corrective action implemented to address what was identified at the last audit, the last external audit. Mm -hmm. So in there, there'd be um, the non-conformances, if there was any. There'd be observations or improvement opportunities, whatever the external um, audit company might call them. So you'll see those opportunities for improvement there. And then you would follow up where the corrective action status was at. There were holes that were identified at the last audit. Have they been plugged and have they been effective, essentially? Okay. All well and good if they have been. Still, though, if the if the business has implemented corrective action, they've closed out the non-conformances, it's still a higher risk. So it's worth you covering in your, I suppose, review of the system just to ensure that nothing similar has happened um, again or elsewhere. Yeah, and I think that's where she's in a, at an advantage. It's a recertification audit. So all of this information is available to her. If it was the first one, then it would be a different story. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for a recertification, that's your first tick. I've, I've got a, mm -hmm. something working in my favour. Yeah, well, definitely. I would hope that a business doesn't call in a consultant with four weeks before their certification mm. audit. I'm sure it's happened it's before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, planning. So even this one, I, I suppose, possibly the client panicked a bit and realised they did need some help. So um, that's why I thought, first thing, external audit results, focus on that first. And then similarly, the second um, area is to look at their previous internal audit results. So these are the audits that the business should have been conducting on their own system during that period of time since the last external audit. Because again, through the internal audit results, they'll see any gaps that have been identified. Again, we're just honing in on the high risk areas because that's where we want to cover our backsides with the external recertification audit. Otherwise, you know, we're, if we, we're not reviewing what, what's gone wrong before and we're spending our time, I don't know, fixing up. Typos. Yeah, that's right typos or formatting well it's a it's a waste of time isn't it absolutely you need, yeah you need to understand where to focus on sorry kelly this reminds me <laughs> you don't oh. like me sharing this remember i was doing a course many years ago <laughs> and i had to finish the assessment i don't oh. i would don't even say it out loud don't give people ideas <laughs> I only come back and bite you. Uh, they can listen to the story but not do what I say. Yeah, do it, don't do it, do it, do it, yeah, do as we <laughs> say, not as we do. No, I don't know, we, that's, even that saying's not working in our favour. <laughs> don't 
do so, what Jackie did, okay? No, She's no, here. not to Don't us. Not to did. us anyway, not to us. But I was sharing with Kelly years ago. I was doing, I don't know, I think it, it must have been a nationally recognised training course. Maybe, I can't remember what it was. I can, and, but I'm not sharing. <laughs> oh, okay. So I had some assignments or something to do and it was all very confusing. And I said to Kelly one day, I said, oh, stuff it. I'm just going to tan it in as it is because mm. I don't know where I'm supposed to be spending my time. Like I've got all of this stuff. I've answered all of the questions, but I was still really unsure whether I'd follow the instructions correctly or not. And I thought, you know what? I've got three attempts at getting this right. If I just send it in as it is, then guess what's going to happen? They're going to mark it and they're going to send it back to me and just tell me all the things that I need to work on. Like it could potentially save me hours of just mucking around. I'm sorry, my webcam, of mucking around. So that's exactly what I did. And therefore, when I got it back, I thought, okay, I only need to answer this, this, and this. And then I, you know, I knew where my focus was. So that's exactly the same direction I was sending the consultant. So it was about identifying where to spend her time and focus on and not dilly-dally around in, in other areas. It's the same thing, Kelly. It is, it is. But now I am terrified about the workload that we're about to receive because oh, we did we did say don't do what Jackie said. Don't, don't be does. like Jackie. Please don't be yeah, like that's Jackie. Right. That's right. If you can't right. follow so, our instructions, please let us know and we'll fix them and support oh, you along. That's better. Way. Yeah. That's, yeah. If that's you can't better. understand like, the instructions, yeah. annoy Christine. Don't annoy Christine, but contact Christine and she'll yeah. help you along the way. Don't yeah. be like Jackie. Please don't be well, like Jackie. That's going back to the root cause, isn't it? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. If you can't understand what we need you to do, let us know. Yes. So that direction is exactly the direction <laughs> I sent um, this consultant on. So look at the external and internal audit results so you know where your focus is. So they're both like what you're looking at is exactly the same, the non-conformances, observations, improvement opportunities, the corrective action status, but obviously One's the external audits and the other are the, your internal audits, okay? So then the third section is about management review. And we all know that clause 9.3 is my favourite clause because, and for the same reason why I sent um, the consultant down this path, is it covers pretty much nearly everything, all of the key areas in the standards. So have a look at their management review outcomes, their meeting minutes, if that's how they choose to do it, because there you'll find whether there's any changes. So in the context or interested parties, you should find um, any customer feedback, positive or negative, and the, the resulting actions. This is where they'll also review any trends in their non-conformances and corrective actions, as well as monitoring, measurement, and audit results. We've already talked about audit results in one and two, so it wraps it up again, and you'll see where top management have, have identified any trends in audit results. It's a good opportunity to flag here and highlight that everything that Jackie's just mentioned None of that was formalized meetings. So your management review doesn't have to be a get everybody together, sit down in a room, have a discussion situation. Each one of those things individually as they are looked at, as they are reviewed, updated, changed, shared, et cetera, that's part of your review. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a sit down formal minuted meeting. As long as you've got all of these things, then you have some form of review evidence and that should be sufficient for your auditor. So if they're asking you for minutes, tell them, yeah, we've got all of these things. We've got all these systems in place. Yeah, and I suppose it is about understanding how they conduct their management review. Mm -hmm. um, there should be some evidence of it somewhere. 
but it's it's it really is about um, top management, so the decision makers reviewing all of these areas, and you should the output should be the actions, and that's what you're looking for. Mm. Thank you for covering me there. You're welcome. Um, and then, oh, it covers external providers as well and the performance of external providers. So that can be a big risk to a business, Absolutely. the non-conformances, yeah, contractors, um, ex- external suppliers of product as well. And then sort of on, on the same vein is the um, resources. So resources can be people, but it can also be um, hardware, software, um you know, whatever they need at their workstations to conduct their work um, with quality, safely, and minimise their impact on the environment. So it all wraps up in the management review. They also cover improvement opportunities. And as I've kept saying, this is all about the outputs. Okay, and you should see what actions or what the outputs are from a management review because Clause 9.3 does require documented information to be retained of the results of the management review, right? So you can see the first one was your external audit results, second was your internal audit results, and then the management review wraps those two up in you know, the actions as well as all of these other areas from the standards. So, you know, you uh, course four, 4.1, context, 4.2, interested parties, your customer satisfaction as well, which I think is 912, non-conformances, which come under 8.7 and 10.2, monitoring measurement, 9.1 or 911, depending on which standard you're looking at. Your audits are also in course nine, 9.2, your external providers are in 8.4. So interestingly enough, those cover sort of a bit of your planning, but also the areas in Clause 8 are the, like the implementation of stuff and then Clause 9 is the checking. So you can see why I love management review so much. It actually covers that whole continual improvement, plan, do, check, act cycle. Um, and that variety um, of clause numbers throughout sort of dots through each section. So it's a great wrap up for for you to review and go, okay, where are my high risk areas in preparation for this external audit? That's why I love the structure because everything that you just said, with the few exceptions, it um, kind of hangs across all of those different standards, well, most, the majority of the ISO standards that uh, are out there. There's a couple of rogue standards, but, yeah, the, that's the benefit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And as I said, that's why it's my favourite. Yeah. And then finally, and possibly I could have made this one number three and management review last because management review does wrap this up as well. but. Another area you'll see is your non-conformance. I'm going to say non-conformance register or incident registers. Uh, I'm using these terms because they're just general. Um, You might call it something else, but basically when I'm talking about a non-conformance register, any non-conformances that have been raised will be documented somewhere, okay? Normally you'll – sorry? Should be, yeah. Exactly, exactly, because it is a requirement um, to have yeah, some evidence of um, I think it's the different types of nonconformances or categories. So we need some idea of what has been happening. So any nonconformances from the external audit, internal audits should be in this nonconformance register or report, but they're not the only places audits where non-conformances are raised. Mm. Non-conformances, yeah, can be raised throughout the day and improvement opportunities, I want to say. Um, Kelly, who's really good at raising improvement opportunities at Atoll? 
Uh, look, I would like to narrow it down, but in the last couple of weeks, it has been everybody. So exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly, everyone contributes. It's um, everyone mm. exactly right. So, and we, you know, we all have access to the improvement um, register, and when we think of something, in it goes. So, when you look at our improvement register, mm. it will also include non-conformances if we get any from external supplies or Kelly and I raise them in internal audits, um, but we just call it an improvement register. And <clears throat> that's where all the gold is. So it's either got great ideas or whoops, this needs fixing. Yeah. And we've actually, we don't just have one improvement register. We've actually got three. And one of them is general business. One of them is course improvements. So that's feedback or problems we've found with instructions um, or questions that people are submitting. So uh, content errors, those sorts of things. And we've got a separate one that we have for ideas and improvements to discuss with our um, external contractors and subbies. So we think of something that we can share with them or they flag something for us. We've got yep. that as well. And sometimes, um, thanks to the wonderful world of Asana, something might be across all three. It yes. might be linked right. to all three. Um, that certainly helps us to quickly work through and process, particularly those non-conformances or areas of significance that need to be prioritised. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, you, you should see something. And as you saw, like, in the examples Kelly and I gave, we call ours an improvement register, but it covers it covers everything. So that's where the gold is. Again, the high risk areas that you should hone in on and ensure they are covered before this recertification audit or any external audit, really. Yeah. And the same goes with incident registers. Okay. So, you know, if you're certified um, against uh, environment or OHS, so 14,001 and 45,001, um, you, you do need to have doc retained documented information with regards to your incidents. Um, so it, it could be combined. It, it sometimes is combined in some of the organizations I visit. Um, but again, the only reason I sent this consultant here is because that's where the high risk stuff is. She has four weeks to get them ready and she needed to focus on the high risk stuff. So, and being in um, civil construction, it is a high risk industry as well. So it meant that during those four weeks, she could hone in, she could focus on the existing system from the, her client that already has generated and provides the evidence of these high-risk areas, of these gaps. So that's all she did during those four weeks is work through these and then any resulting actions close those gaps, work with the client, and um, guess what? What? <laughs> when they when they were went through their recertification, they were recertified. It worked. Oh, funny that. <laughs> I know, I know. And and it removed all this stress as mm -hmm. well, because instead of having to think you were rewriting an entire system, it gave you that focus point. Like I mentioned with how I did my training years ago, it gave me something to focus on and yeah. not get distracted by the other stuff that I didn't really know whether was an issue or not. Mm. I needed, yeah, you need to understand where your focus needs to go and these four areas, internal audits, external audits, management review outcomes, and your non-conformance and incident registers, they're the place where it's happening already. Don't make new stuff up. Yeah, one source of the truth. Focus, yeah. focus on that risk. Take that risk-based approach. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess there was a great outcome for that. 
Okay, and that's why I thought it was beneficial to share because it was a it was a new new question for me initially. It was sort of a bit jarring, and I thought, oh, okay, we've got four weeks to prepare. What do you look at? And I know it's it's always on the tip of my tongue or hanging around in my head somewhere, but to actually be forced to think, okay, what would I look at? That's exactly the areas. So if you're a consultant and you're in the same position um, or you're um, getting your own system ready for recertification or a surveillance audit, I, I really think these four areas to focus on will help you to narrow down the work that you need to do. Yeah? Yeah. And I think, too, it's... Um a good reminder for for when you're planning your audits as well, looking at that risk level, it's not just about kind of, as you said, focusing on the standards levels. It was a, a great question that we had on a, on a chat internally yesterday around following the standards clause by clause. That's not going to help you in this situation. Look at those gaps that that exist Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the things that we do when obviously we're we're planning our internal audits based on risk as it is but the first thing we always do for our internal audits is pretty much exactly what you've just said we always go through Mm. our previous non-conformances from whether it's ASQA or Exemplar Global, should there be any, any previous non-conformances from our internal audit reports, have we addressed those? What are the gaps there? Okay, now we'll run through the rest of our process. So I suppose, as you said earlier, you should already in some way be doing this internally without having to think about a consultant. It should be best everyday business practice. It shouldn't be a special process. No, you're right. You're right. And it, I suppose using these four areas, it's it's good to share um, with other businesses. This is what, these are the areas that you should be looking at. And really, you know how I said, I maybe should have put it in a different order, external audit results, internal audit results, the non-conformance register, incident register, and then management review, because those first three points, now I've shuffled the order again. I think I did that a few weeks ago. <laughs> Um, the management review covers all of them anyway. Absolutely. So Absolutely. it just wraps it all up nicely. And as you said, the management review should already be doing that. Mm. It should, you know, it should be ongoing. So the tools are all there. This has reminded me, someone mentioned to me, uh, so along similar veins as to what you were saying about, well, how, how we're heading up, use the existing system. Someone mm-hmm. mentioned to me, um, I think it was last week, oh, I've written an entire change management procedure. And I went, can you just please stop that? <laughs> don't, don't write a change management procedure. I know there's change management in the standards, but mm-hmm. everything that you build within your management system is built to manage change. Mm. You don't need to create something new. Your tools are already there. So this is exactly the same. If something changes, it's like, okay, well, if something changes, guess what's in management review? Changes, trends. You know, that's the driver. If something changes, take it, bring it up, okay? Now what are we going to do? Is there a gap? Oh, well, if there's a gap, put it on our non-conformance register or improvement register. Now what do we? It's just the same. It's just every day. And I I know we're talking about a recertification order in this um, question that's come through today, but I do want to flag that we do have on our website and um, it is an IMS gap analysis tool, but it can be used for individual standards. And look, if if you are looking at certification audits or you are just wanting to have a look at your systems outside of ISO itself, that's a really good tool to find those gaps in the first 
instance, I guess. Um, so if you were looking at considering certification or you just wanted to have a look at how you can improve your business without the certification, we have that tool on our website and I will make sure that that's shared um, in the all of the places that you could be listening or watching this uh, podcast right yeah, now. That is a great tool. You've done a great job making that work. Uh, if there's any improvements <laughs> that need to be done to that. <laughs> say, <laughs> say thank you. <laughs> no, it is really it's a really good tool. I share it with a lot of people. Um, because yeah, it's really interactive. Um and it, yeah, it gives you that sort of not only um, you know, drill down side of it, but then the bird's eye view in a summary. So yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Wonderful. Oh, Are there right. any questions, Kelly? Well, I was just going to say to you that I'd like to open up the floor because I do have a couple of questions here. And the first one, I'm sure a lot of people probably, if they were given this timeline, would be thinking about themselves. So just before I do, I'll um, share this question with Jackie. If you do have another question you'd like, please use the chat uh, or comments functions for our student community. They are free for your use. Um, but Jackie... Yes. If I was given four weeks, I would be asking, can I get an extension on my ORME certification <laughs> and how do I do that? Well, I guess you can ask for an extension, but I think it depends on, well, actually it's a recertification. So with a recertification, and if we've got anyone watching that has experience in this area for certification bodies, I know if there's if it's a recertification, there is a, a time constraint because uh, I think they do like to ensure that the recertification audits are done, I don't know, say six to eight weeks in advance, just in case of the of the expiry date, just in case there are major non-conformances or you know, or issues. However, with surveillance audits, so there's snapshots in between the research there is a bit more flexibility with the time because it's not um, so dependent on the expiry date of the recertification. So um, I would say, well, yes, depends on what, what the um, audit is, surveillance or research, but really just plan better. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was like, where you were going to start, you, to be you, honest. <laughs> yeah, you, you know it's coming up. Don't leave it to the last minute. Use your system all the way along. Yeah, absolutely. And and the answers I've just received in the chat from other people that are listening um, is it's hard to get an extension. Not being ready isn't an acceptable reason from, no. from Jazz Ants. And as Jackie said, plan. And I'm sure there's a few clauses that are probably going to be helpful for that. Um, yes. And you do need a sufficient time prior to the expiry date to address a major if one is raised. So, yeah, yeah that's yeah. something that you obviously would need to take into consideration. Yeah, and I think that's why when it is a research audit, the flexibility on date isn't there and they like to do it, you know, a, a lot earlier to allow for, for that. And correct me if I'm wrong, but a recertification or a surveillance audit is not a surprise. No, <laughs> absolutely you not. Well, no, you and, yeah, and I suppose the certification body I contract for for the certification audits I conduct on the audit plan um, for the next year. It actually says, you know, it, and I just put the month, the month that the audit will be conducted next year. And yeah. then the actual dates will be confirmed. So they all they all know when it's coming up. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. plan better. You plan better. Plan, do check and act. Um <laughs> I suppose there is the exception to that. We do know we have quite a number of um, members of our ASOL community that work in the health space and aged care and food, and there are going to be times there when somebody is just going to turn up. So, again, that's even mm -hmm. more reason for you to be making this your everyday business practice. Oh, okay, yep. yeah, I've got no problems showing you where our management review yep. documents are. Yep. Oh, yeah, here's our nonconformances that, and all of our corrective actions that we've closed out. If it's part of your everyday business... You're not going to be freaking out with four weeks really? to go thinking, oh, no, really? 
what do I do now? Yeah, and that's what it should be, shouldn't it? Like, again, as per our internal discussions yesterday, it's not, these systems aren't something that you've got to shove down people's throats and force them to engage with. It's mm. like really um, people working within your business shouldn't even realise that there is a quality system or an oh and system in the corner. It's mm. not separate. It's just what you do. Yeah, and I think that's a really important point to raise is that, uh, and we've I had this conversation um, last year. We had Burn um, join us and fill in for you, and she said exactly the same thing. And I know that uh, if I asked any of our team, particular if I use the terminology around where is this. Oh, show, show me your corrective actions register or show me this and use the terms from the standard. I'm I'm confident that our team would have an idea, but they may not, we, we don't refer to it as that. And, and no. neither did Burn um, when she was sharing hers, but all of her team knew the everyday mm-hmm. systems. And if you used their terminology, oh, yeah, I know where this, 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 this is. It, it is yep. so ingrained in them from day-to-day use that, yeah, it's not a, oh, clause five point whatever. Yeah, I know where to find all the answers to that. You, you know. No, they they just do it. And, yeah, yeah. And Burns from Style Motors and I've been auditing them for years and that's why I wanted to share Burn and her system because it is, yeah, a, a solid a benchmark system um, that they've built and all of the team, it's I, I don't talk to anyone except Burn uh, about clauses. I just say, can you just show me what you do? And they don't even realise that I'm translating it in my head to, oh, that's this and the standard, that's this, because it's just what they do. Mm. Yeah, no, that's really good. Wonderful. Well, I don't have any further questions, Jackie. So I think I can hear you starting to get very husky again. And I don't want this. It's my sexy voice. I was going to say, I don't want this to turn into a different sort of podcast. So I am going to start right. Sorry. Yeah, my head's not even working properly to do that. No. No, look, I've never seen Jackie does not give up on things or stop things or pull out of things. And yeah, this is the first time we've actually had to say sorry. Jackie is not with us today. Um, it has been a very quiet week. So thank you, Jackie. <laughs> holding yourself together for today um so we are going to pull up a little bit short today just so jackie can rest but thank you all for joining us again as we close today's episode we want to thank you for joining us as we explored leveraging your management system for external audit success jackie and i hope our insights and tips have helped you prepare for your recertification audits even when that timeline is tight if you'd like to know more about today's topic check out edition 51 of our lead the standard newsletter on linkedin Now, a quick reminder for our Atoll students, participating in the live streams of our podcast is one of the many perks of being part of our student community. And if you haven't enrolled in an Atoll course yet, visit our website to see how you can start making a significant change in your career. So please join us next week as we dive into Beyond the Paperwork, unlocking a strategic value of documented information. So until next time, keep leading the standard and goodbye for now.